Lev Vygotsky and Ernest Hemingway are two people I'm going to name drop, <laughs> and then I'm going to try and make some sense of that in order to address the question, uh, what does e-learning add um, to this whole thing? So uh, Vygotsky uh, is associated with the notion of collaborative learning and this learning uh, as a sort of social practice. And in fact, the, the notion of all culture is social practice. And that you learn it uh, by doing it interactively, but also by seeing it done. That's what I'm taking from Vygotsky. And that brings me to Hemingway, uh, who I think I'm, I hope I'm quoting the right person. Linda can correct me, I'm sure. Uh, his narrative practice, I believe, can be summed up in the phrase, show, don't tell. Okay, so, um, and what I take from that is that if you want people to learn something, don't give them a kind of adjective, heavy, descriptive prose. Give them prose that dramatises um, what it is you're trying to dramatise, because that's much more direct, show, learn, tell. So, what does e-learning add? If you're trying to learn history, to go back to Vygotsky, you're trying to learn a social practice. It's a form of interaction with various rules. So, for example, uh, there's the idea that you know you shouldn't just hurl abuse at someone else when you're having a debate. There's this thing called debate, which is to do with referencing evidence. It's to do with uh, listening to what people have to say. It's to do with presenting your case clearly, but also being prepared to revise it in the light of criticism, which you have to take with good grace and so on. So history is a social practice. Um, it's also a particular form of language. There's language use. That, you know, historians use language in rather odd ways. Uh, just to illustrate that, we were always talking about really highly abstract things, like you know the, the, the industrial revolution. Well, you know what is it? Where did it live? Uh, who was its mother? You know, it's an abstraction. It's quite hard to get your head around. Also, as well, though, historians talk about causes, you know, as if a cause was a thing. I've never seen you know, the six causes of the French Revolution in a bucket. <laughs> they're not things. They're abstractions. So history is a, is a very difficult uh, in, in a number of ways. Quite abstract sort of social and linguistic practice. Um, now, uh, show, don't tell. So what can you do online, what can you do with e-learning e that might help people learn this practice? You can dramatise it by creating online debate. Uh, you can model historical thinking. This is, I think, the beauty of these short podcasts. Um, and, and also, you can provide opportunities for people to rehearse this new language they're learning, this new practice they're beginning to understand. To show you what I mean by modelling, though, there's a great little quick clip that we've used in a number of the, uh, of, of, of the, in the toolkits we've developed. It's uh, a Raul, Raul Hilberg talking about the Holocaust. It's a little clip from the film Show. And he spends 10 minutes or so just scrutinising this, no, uh, this, this, this uh, German timetable uh, between various places in Poland and Treblinka. And it's much more powerful, I think, to see Hilberg read a timetable than it is to read you know, a chapter about how to be critical with sources. He just sits there, pulling it all out, you know, marvellously. And you can watch him again and again and again uh, online. Uh, similarly, when the postgraduates you know, talk about their research on these clips, which we've integrated into the site, students can have historical practice modelled for them. This is also true when historians talk, and they can watch it again and again and again. Um, they can, like that example earlier where Ted was giving feedback, what Ted was really doing, I think, was modelling the expectations of, of, of how they should be thinking about questions. And, uh, you know, that is rehearsing or demonstrating in front of the students the kinds of thinking that history calls for. And it's there, it's archived, it can be re revisited again and again and again. So I think, um, if we think about hi learning history as learning a language and learning a certain set of practices, and if we then follow the principle that if you're going to learn something, it helps if you see it practiced and you have an opportunity to rehearse it. Um, I think on, on e-learning is bound to uh, add a lot to our efforts to develop uh, undergraduate 